When it comes to baking, cooking is a science. And in science, accuracy counts. Precisely measuring ingredients makes a difference in how your recipes turn out. So measure up with good, quality measuring spoons and cups. You don't need fancy or expensive ones, just simple, basic, and easy to use. Here's what every home cook should have. Measuring spoons, liquid measuring cups, and dry measuring cups. Let's talk spoons first. They come in graduated sizes that include 1 8 teaspoon, 1 quarter teaspoon, 1 half teaspoon, 1 teaspoon, and 1 tablespoon. Measuring spoons work for wet or dry ingredients. To measure a dry ingredient, dip in the spoon and level it off with the back of a knife. To measure a wet ingredient, hold the spoon level and pour in the liquid until the spoon is completely full. Next are measuring cups. It's a good idea to have two different types of measuring cups. One for liquids like milk, water, or oils, and another set for dry ingredients like flour or sugar. The basic measuring cup for liquid is usually clear and has measurements printed on the side. This type of measuring cup also has a handle, a pouring spout, and plenty of headroom in case ingredients expand. The most useful measuring cups are heat-proof microwave-safe glass for hot ingredients as well as cool. To read a liquid measure accurately, put the cup on a flat surface and bend down so you can see the measurement at eye level. Sticky, thick liquids like molasses, honey, or corn syrup are measured best by wiping down the inside of the cup or measuring spoon with a little oil or butter before you pour. The thin coat of grease helps it pour out again easily and completely. For shortening, scoop it out of the container and press it into the cup or spoon to force out any air bubbles or pockets. Then level it off. And for stick butter, just measure using the increments marked right on the paper wrapper. Slice off what you need. Don't be tempted to pour ingredients into your measuring cup or spoon while holding it over the top of your mixing bowl. It's too easy to accidentally spill in more than you need. Now, let's measure dry ingredients. Dry measuring cups are different from liquid cups and come in sizes for a fourth cup, third cup, half cup, and one cup. To fill the cup, use the dip and sweep method for dry ingredients such as rice or granulated sugar. Just dip and fill the cup, then sweep level with a knife. Flour and powdered sugar take a little extra finesse. White and whole wheat flour is easily compacted, so it should be stirred first, then spooned into the measuring cup and leveled off. Powdered sugar needs to be sifted in order to remove lumps before measuring. Brown sugar has more moisture, so pack it firmly into the measuring cup or spoon before leveling with the knife. Also, pay close attention to how a recipe is worded. If it says, one cup sifted flour, make sure to sift the flour first and then measure one cup. One cup flour, comma, sifted. Measure it first and then sift it. It's always a good idea to follow the recipe the way it is written the first time you try it. Then improvise later when you're familiar with how the ingredients all come together. With inexpensive and basic measuring spoons and cups, you can measure ingredients with accuracy and cook with confidence.